Welcome to Pet Food Forum, the global event for the pet food industry. You're watching Pet Food Forum TV, your source for all the news, tips, and fun things happening at the show. I'll be your host, keeping you up to date on everything Pet Food Forum related right here on this channel. Stay tuned for interviews with industry experts, features from the show floor, and of course, the daily highlights. Pet Food Forum, where pet food professionals from all around the globe gather to learn the latest research and innovative information on pet food nutrition, global market growth, processing, packaging, and so much more. We're coming to you from Kansas City, Missouri, the heart of the Animal Health Corridor. Precision. It defines everything we do. From engineering concept to manufactured equipment. We bring this all together to produce state-of-the-art extrusion platforms. Precision. Made in the U.S. of A. Each day, Trow Nutrition helps pets around the world live a happier, healthier life. Trow Nutrition is an international leader providing the companion animal industry with science-based ingredients. Our efforts lead to discovery and introduction of new, unique, and improved pet food formulas for our customers. Trusted, premium, focused, safe. Blending resources and innovative solutions is our foundation of creating long-term relationships with some of the leading pet food companies in the world. Forum provides the ideal opportunity for pet food professionals from around the world to network, exchange ideas, and do business with one another with the industry's leading pet food manufacturers and suppliers. Our speakers are leading recognized pet food industry experts. Today's an exciting day, so here are a few of the upcoming events you don't want to miss. After breakfast, head on over to the opening keynote from Jack Hanna, popular host of the Emmy Award winning television series, Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. Then Natasha Davis, client service manager for GFK, highlights humanistic trends driving premiumization in the U.S. Pet Specialty Channel and how some new and not so new categories are transforming as a result. Don't miss the networking reception this evening and poster presentations from students and industry researchers. We've created an environment here for students to be able to engage with industry partners. So this group here is the future of pet food. 
And so never before have we had uh, such a turnout of both industry players as well as students to come here, learn about the industry and potential careers in the industry. This is your Pet Food Forum TV, and I'm your host, Kristen Levine, coming to you from the Pet Food Innovation Workshop at Kansas State University. And look who I've got here today, Dr. Greg Eldridge. Welcome Hi. back. Hello, Kristen. So lots to talk about, but let's, let's kick it off with um, what is the biggest challenge in attracting new talent in this really competitive pet food industry today? So for companies, the biggest challenge is we just don't have enough mm -hmm. talent. Uh, Part of the challenge there is, is that the enrollment at the universities is actually declining. So this Generation Z that's now coming into our universities is at a real low uh, count. So uh, the universities are struggling to get enough students and there go, uh, we are having a challenge getting enough graduates. And so companies are having to compete more and more with less and less uh, student population. That's good news for the students. It is great. It's great. Uh, <laughs> the students are going to have a lot of opportunities. Uh, most of them come out with a job uh, pretty much immediately. So let's shift gears now. Okay. Let's talk about what we're, what we're doing here today at the uh, Pet Food Innovation Workshop. Um, the, the theme is new product development journey, correct? Right, right. So give us a little brief explanation of that. So uh, in this category of pet food, we're seeing a tremendous growth in new product entries. Uh, by the last count, I got somewhere around 3,000 new products a year are being introduced into the pet food, uh, just in pet food industry. Just in the pet food industry. What, we're seeing some interesting trends there. Uh, people are spending more and more on their pets, but they're getting, uh, they're, they're, they're having smaller and smaller pets, mm -hmm. and they're upgrading. And so we're seeing a, a pretty rapid premiumization of new products, a lot of new food forms, a lot of new ingredients. And so uh, the companies that are going to succeed in the next decade or more are going to really have to get up to speed on a lot of the new concepts and a lot of the new ideas and that's all part of this product development process. Uh, some companies have made that a part of their culture or their business management system but a lot have not. And so what we're trying to do is give people an immersion opportunity to see what this process is all about yeah. and to show them some best practices some tricks and traps along the way mm -hmm. so that they can manage their, their success. Any traps you want to share with us that you could tip, tip well, companies off to avoiding? Yeah, so the biggest trap in, in all of this is not, being, uh, not having planned adequately before you start. So mm -hmm. uh, companies have to get out there and see what the consumer wants, get really tied in to the marketplace, understand where the gaps are, understand where the competitors are. Mm -hmm. And then as they start to create that uh, mental image of what that product should be, they need to start to capture that in some sort of a concept document. And in many cases, companies have an idea or people have an idea, young entrepreneurs that want a new product in the marketplace. They have these ideas, but they really haven't distilled them down to the core essence of what has to be done. And once they do that, they start to put the financial picture behind it, then we can go to work. Then we can really make things happen but there's a lot of legwork that has to be done up front mm -hmm. and many, many, many fail to start that process. And so that's the biggest trap. Yeah. Well, this is a terrific opportunity for, for companies that you're, that you're doing this immersion. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. No, it's great tools. Uh, we've had a pretty good reception. Um, you know, most of the feedback we're getting is, is mm -hmm. just to that point yeah. that, you know, they appreciate having someone bring this all together so we can talk collectively, mm -hmm. uh, do some hands on, learn some inter with some interaction, yep. have some Q&A. So an opportunity for everybody to kind of share. So it's not us teaching or pushing information down. It's right. them getting to exchange information with each other. And, by that, you know, they're going to make connections and they're going to pick up some information too. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Aldridge, for joining us again today, and we'll see you on the floor. Kristen, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Excellent. All right, and we'll be back with more on Pet Food Forum TV.
are watching Pet Food Forum TV, your source for all the news, tips, and fun things happening at the show. Welcome back to Pet Food Forum TV. I'm your host, Kristen Levine, and we are here at Kansas State University at the Pet Food Innovation Workshop. And I have another, another terrific guest, Julia Pazali. Welcome. Thank you. Sure. Uh, she is a, research, a graduate research assistant here at Kansas State, and you're going to be presenting this year at the conference. Yes. And tell us a little bit about uh, the overview of your research. OK. So my research was done at Kansas State University under the supervision of Dr. Greg Aldrich. And we are looking for comparing the effects of ancient grains and grain-free starter sources on processing parameters, kibble traits, and palatability in dogs. Okay. And for doing that, we formulated two diets with same carbohydrate content. So one diet, the carbs are coming from ancient grains like as sorghum, millet, and spelt. And in the other one, these carbs are coming from grain-free sources mm -hmm. such as potatoes, peas, and tapioca starch. We process these diets in a single screw extruder, mm -hmm. pilot scale, and then recorded all processing parameters to analyze the data. We also get 20 kibbles per replicate and analyze diameter, length, and later we, do the we did the palatability study with 20 dogs in two days. So we have all this data to compare the diets. Wow, wow. And, and so what surprised you about the findings? What were the major findings? So different carbohydrate sources, they behave differently during processing. So when you're formulating a diet, although you have the same proportion of carbs, if they're coming from legumes, tubers, or grains, they're going to behave different. So you need to let our operator know it so they can change the inputs during processing. And one very interesting result is that the palatability, in the palatability study, dogs really prefer the grain-free diets compared to the ancient grains. Ah, that's good to know. Yes. <laughs> so uh, why should pet food companies be interested in ancient grains? So the ancient grains, there are some studies that, that have been done in humans. They have some health benefits, such as low glycemic index, antioxidant capacities. So they are very promising to be used in pet foods. So that's something that companies can think about when including it. And although not our palatability data show that they prefer grain-free, it doesn't mean they don't like the ancient grains. Right. It may be something in the grain-free diet that they prefer more. I so see. we need to further study these results. And I know you studied the, uh, the palatability of ancient grain in mm -hmm. with dogs, but not cats. What, why, what was the reason for that? So we did dogs first because the biggest part of the market mm -hmm. is the dog food. Okay. So that was our first choice but we are planning to study the palatability in cats also. Okay, and what, do you have any expectations about what the differences might be at this stage, or is it too early? Yeah, we don't know yet what's gonna be the results in cats, but we've done some studies in the lab before with Dr. Aldrich, and when you change ingredients, some dog, dogs prefer one diet and cats prefer another, so we may see some changes when you change for dogs, okay. for cats. And um, so what has the Student Career Center here at Kansas State University done for you? This is a great opportunity for us as students to show our work both to academia and the industry and I think it's a great opportunity to talk with people make connections and open the doors for job opportunities yes. so I highly recommend the students to come to Pet Food Forum and bring their work excellent excellent and what are what are your career goals I'm doing my master's I'm gonna finish in one year hopefully <laughs> and I'm thinking about going to the industry work for one and two years I really like doing research so I'd like to work in a R&D position Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your contributions no to the industry and best of luck to you in your career. Thank you. And um, we'll be back with more right here at Pet Food Forum TV. Today's an exciting day, so here are a few of the upcoming events you don't want to miss. After breakfast, head on over to the opening keynote from Jack Hanna, popular host of the Emmy Award-winning television series, Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. Then, Natasha Davis, client service manager for GFK, highlights humanistic trends driving premiumization in the U.S. Pet Specialty Channel, and how some new and not-so-new categories are transforming as a result. Don't miss the networking reception this evening and poster presentations from students and industry researchers. After hours, Pet Food Forum participants can network and socialize in the newly revitalized Power and Light District with countless dining and entertainment options. 
is just a few blocks away from the Convention Center. Pet Food Forum provides the ideal opportunity for pet food professionals from around the world to network, exchange ideas, and do business with one another with the industry's leading pet food manufacturers and suppliers. Our speakers are leading recognized pet food industry experts. Each day, Trow Nutrition helps pets around the world live a happier, healthier life. Trow Nutrition is an international leader providing the companion animal industry with science-based ingredients. Our efforts lead to discovery and introduction of new, unique, and improved pet food formulas for our customers. Trusted, premium, focused, safe. Blending resources and innovative solutions is the right formula to build your pet food business. Trow Nutrition USA is committed to providing superior quality and safe solutions. We pride ourselves on taking the necessary steps to confirm that ingredients and finished blends meet or exceed our customers' standards. Trow's Pet Food Ready Quality Program safeguards the integrity of our products and ingredient blends. Trow Nutrition has been a leader for decades, blending resources and innovative solutions. Give us the opportunity to create the right formula for you. What does it take to be a leader in producing top premium pet food brands? What does it take to be the production leader of e-commerce pet food brands? What does it take to be the production leader in producing specialty pet food? Look no further than ExtraTech's wide variety of single screw processing solutions. The workshops are tailored to try and introduce people to some of the concepts, but more importantly, you're introduced to the people that are behind the product. So it gives you access to them to ask questions that are pertinent to your own product, development goals to your own product performance goals in a very relaxed environment. Welcome to Pet Food Forum, the global event for the pet food industry. Welcome back to Pet Food Forum TV. I'm Kristen Levine, your host, and I am joined by James Restivo, uh, one of the pet experts at Nielsen. I wanted to call him the pet expert, but you insist you're one of the pet experts. How did your presentation go this morning? It went fantastic. The audience was extremely engaged, and I think they were extremely excited to get on with the pet form and really start to understand the marketplace. That's fantastic. Can you give us a little synopsis of what you talked about today for those of, a, for those of us that didn't make it? Sure. The title of the presentation was The Leaders and the Followers, and it was all about the trends occurring on the human side and whether or not pet is a follower to those trends or in some cases an accelerator of those trends and really trying to talk about what is growing 
and driving growth in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, um, what is the number one factor that consumers consider when buying pet food or selecting a pet food? Nielsen believes, based on our research, that the number one thing that pet parents are considering these days is the underlying health and wellness of the animal itself. We do surveys to consumers with our partner Harris, and in the latest one, 95% of consumers consider that pet as part of the family, and a third of them are actually cooking for the pet. Yeah. So that means pet parents are becoming more and more aware of what they're giving their pet mm -hmm. and more discerning in terms of what they're choosing from the show. Interesting, 95% did 95 you say? 95% consider pets that's, as a member of the fantastic. family. I, I'd wonder how many people actually consider their kids a member of the right. family. <laughs> right, we should do that, that study <laughs> next. Um, so how do you think that differs from 10 years ago? What, what were pet parents choosing, uh, how are pet parents choosing pet food 10 years ago? What was their most, their biggest concern? As we've looked over the past 10 years, it's that discernment and education factor that's really the difference. Mm -hmm. And pet parents seem to be willing to pay for that difference. Mm -hmm. um, spend is up about 35% since 2006 on pet food, um, which is a interesting statistic when you think that inflation has grown mm -hmm. by just about zero in that time. We're starting to see pet parents really demand quality, and that started back in 2007, 2008, with the need for USA made and USA sourced ingredients. Sure. And that just jumped off into things like natural and grain free, mm -hmm. and everything we're seeing today with the human trends starting to migrate over to the pet side. So, um, so James, what kind of innovations are you seeing now in pet food and in treats? Nielsen has undertaken an exclusive partnership with a company called Label Insights. Mm -hmm. And based on that partnership, we're not just looking at claims of new products, we're looking at the ingredient statements, what's in and what's out. And from that, we're understanding the innovation that not is just hitting the shelf, but those innovations driving growth in the marketplace. And there's a couple themes we're seeing. Number one is clean label. As manufacturers are starting to take ingredients out of the products, we're seeing some growth in those products. We're seeing a rise in things like natural, and we're seeing a rise in things that are uh, artificial ingredient free. Mm. The more emerging trends are things like superfoods. Think cranberries, if you have a cat, they've got urinary tract challenges. Mm. Manufacturers are putting cranberries in there, just like on the human side, to start to solve some of those problems. And even things like blueberries we're seeing sure. on the rise for kale, the on <laughs> kale uh, quinoa as uh, plant-based diets start to enter the marketplace. And it's a really exciting time for anybody in the industry as they start to think about what do I need to do to be ready for what's next. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, James Restivo, uh, one of the uh, pet experts at Nielsen. And we'll be back with more Pet Food Forum TV. Pet Food Forum provides the ideal opportunity for pet food professionals from around the world to network, exchange ideas, and do business with one another with the industry's leading pet food manufacturers and suppliers. Our speakers are leading recognized pet food industry experts. Today's an exciting day, so here are a few of the upcoming events you don't want to miss. After breakfast, head on over to the opening keynote from Jack Hanna, popular host of the Emmy Award-winning television series, Jack Hanna's Into the Wild. 
Then, Natasha Davis, Client Service Manager for GFK, highlights humanistic trends driving premiumization in the U.S. Pet Specialty Channel and how some new and not so new categories are transforming as a result. Don't miss the networking reception this evening and poster presentations from students and industry researchers. Known as the barbecue capital of the world and for its live jazz, Kansas City is a gracious and historic blend of cultures, arts, and professional sports teams, and it also features vibrant restaurants, hotels, shops, and art galleries. Hi, and welcome to Pet Food Forum TV. I'm your host, Kristen Levine, and today I'm joined by Dr. Sarah Cutler. Yesterday, you presented on um, the impact of diet composition on shelf life. So give us a little synopsis of, of your, what your talk was about. Well, what's amazing about the pet food industry is that we do use a lot of byproducts from human food, um, as well as sometimes food grade materials, and, and how fresh those materials are really makes a difference in the shelf life of the diet. So I went through, of course, fats, um, how stable that fat is because it goes on the outside of the kibble. That's very important to prevent the formation of off odors, as well as carbohydrate sources, which can be almost anything, um, can be rice, can be um, lots of different grains, as well as protein. And, and protein has been a focus of ours at Kemen because it's it's a big part of the diet and the freshness of that material going in there really impacts how well the diet performs as well as how it tastes to the pet and if they accept it or not. But what are the biggest challenges in terms of stability? Well, you know, diet substitutions, um, pet food is, is a really interesting thing because we use a variety of materials and, you know, markets change. So things like gluten-free, um, no corn, no wheat, no soy, those sorts of claims in pet food. If you start substituting ingredients out, then you can change the shelf life of a diet. So a lot of times, you know, those decisions are made based on, you know, making the package look good or making the diet appealing to the consumer, not necessarily making it shelf life stable, but that's why my, di my job is really interesting. It's been a great industry to work in because it is very creative. Yeah. So what do you hope some of the takeaways are that your attendees had from the presentation? I, I hope that they think about um, where their raw material comes from, uh, especially things like um, raw, fresh meat, you know, how it's handled, um, how fresh that material is going into the diet because that can really make a difference. And we want to provide pets with the, the best smelling, best tasting, most appealing diet that we can. So. Um, will help as much as we can, um, but yeah, make, make good decisions about raw material quality. Okay, great. And what, what have you, you've been at Kemen for a little more than? Oh, the, what, yeah, eight oh, years. Eight years, okay, yeah, so what, at least. What are some of the, the most significant changes you've seen in the industry since your time at Kemen? Oh, grain-free, so uh, very high protein diets. You know, the technology for extrusion has changed so much that um, pet food companies can incorporate large amounts of meats into their diet now. The no corn, no wheat, no soy right. thing. Um, regulations uh, such as like identity preserved, non-GMO, um, U.S. origin, the, the amount of regulatory thought um, and care that is put into these diets as well as things like incorporation of new ingredients. So ancient grains, um, beans, those sorts of things just weren't present in diets a few years ago. So it, it changes all the time. 